I recently uploaded some new macros to the Soundflow store to help with panning in Dolby Atmos. These have been big time savers for me, and I thought maybe they might help some other people. And I thought it'd be good to do a little video to sort of show how they work and talk a little bit about panning strategies. If you're new to seeing any of my videos or my websites, my name is Dave Stagel. I'm a mix engineer based in the Atlanta area, working Atmos and Stereo. If you want to find out more about me and projects I've worked on and hear samples and all that kind of good stuff, you can visit my website at www.stagelproductions.com. So let's take a look at the macros. This is my deck. I put a smaller, more um, concise version of this up in the store. So you can get it basically, you can get it the basic panning macros, which are going to be these over here. So left, center, right, left side, center, rear, right, rear. Um, and then these are for stereo tracks to uh, put a stereo track somewhere in the space. I also have some other routing macros here that I made. These are not up in the store and they just, it just makes things faster. I mean, the whole idea of this is speed. And the reason I put this together was last year I was working on a track and I had a lot, like a lot of background vocals. And when they came in, you know, it's it was the kind of thing where you might've gone, oh my gosh, why do they need that many? But now in Atmos, I saw it and I went, oh, let's fly them all around the room. So I wanted to start panning these vocals all around. And when you've got, you know, 24 tracks of vocals and you have to go in to each individual one and pan it, it's pretty tedious. And if you look in Pro Tools, like the surround panner, you know, you can't really like you have this little window here. Um, in the edit window. And that's where I spend most of my time. If I go over to the mix window, if I go over to the mix window, I mean, you know, it's a little easier. They're a little bigger, but it's still, you know, it, it, uh, just trying to pan in this is kind of, kind of a pain. It's not, it's not ideal um, once you're doing, trying to do more than left, right. So I just wanted a quick way to pan things. So I wrote a bunch of macros to do that. And I'll just demonstrate them for you real quick. So, you know, here's a guitar. I want to put that in the left. I can just hit the left button. Boom. There it is. If I want to put it on the right side, I can hit the right side. It goes there. I can put it in the right rear. It just, it, it works real quick to pan. And these work in stereo. I mean, the, the sides and rear ones don't, but the left, center, right, works for any track in any session, really. Then I have these other buttons to route things. The mix bed, that's kind of my bed that I use. Uh, it could be an object bed. It could be the bed. I actually have an augs that I use so that I can do a little bit of old school bus compression on it. The wides routes to what would be the wide locations in a 914 setup. In 914, you have extra speakers in front between the front left and right and the side left and right. Tops, that puts stuff up into a, um, I have a object bed for my height channels and it goes up in the top and then all these panning locations will work to put it up top. So for example, if I wanna put that guitar up top, I can hit tops there, it routed up top and then I can pan it to the left side, to the right side. So if I open it up, you can see it's it's just a quad bus. If I put it down on the mix bed, as I call it, now we've got the full seven. If I go to the top, routes the top, and I've got the four. So it's it's just a quick way to route things and a quick way to do things so that I don't have to spend all day just kind of passing things around. There's a couple other macros on here I should talk about. This Diverge 81, that sends the front divergence of like a mono source to 81. And that's just, well, if I want to put something across all three speakers, that 81 kind of works for something panned in the center. If I just want to kind of bring it out, 
to the front. Um, do that with bass a lot of the time. I'm still on the fence a little bit about doing that, and that'll make a little more sense a little later in the video when I talk about panning strategies, but that is there and available to do. The other button here, this phantom center, that'll just basically, anything that's panned right in the middle and the front center, it will pull it completely out of the center speaker so that it creates a phantom center. And there are different opinions on doing this. I know some of the labels request that you keep vocals out of the center speakers. Personally, I like having vocals in the center, but if somebody wants them out, that's not a hill that I'm going to die on. I, I think it's better having them in the center because it really locks them and anchors them right in, in the front, in the center. But it, it's not a big deal for me. I can just pop them out. And that's what that button is there for, is it'll just, it'll take it out of the center channel and it'll put it in the front, left, right. One button does it real fast, so I can change it out if I need to. So let's talk a little bit about my panning strategy. I have been an LCR guy for, I don't know, a, a really long time. I think um, Chris Lord Algae was probably the mixer who sort of opened my eyes or ears to it. And once I started hearing it, I started hearing it everywhere and a lot of the engineers I like. And basically the idea of LCR panning is there's three positions. There's left, center, and right. And that's it. Everything gets panned to that. Now, I'm not I'm not 100% an LCR mixer, um, but I am probably 90% or so. So when it comes to Atmos, I've kind of taken that approach and brought it forward. So I have basically these eight positions down on the deck and then up top, I can, I can use these eight, but really I kind of just stick to the four corners. And I'm not necessarily thinking in terms of speakers, I'm just thinking positions and to go fast. And if I want to put something in between in, you know, in between the the left side and left rear, I can do it. I can just turn it into an object and move it. But for the majority of things, I found that this works really good. And there's a few reasons for it. First of all, the kind of phantom imaging that we are used to in stereo, where we have a phantom image created between the left and right by putting some the same thing in the left as in the right, that it comes into the middle. That doesn't work the same when we start moving into the sides. At least that's been my experience. And, you know, one thing I should say in this is, you know, you, you've got to experiment and try this stuff for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. There's a lot of different guys out there working in Atmos and everybody has different strategies. This is just what I found I like and what I feel like works for, for me. So try it out and figure out what works for you. But for me, I don't feel like the phantom imaging, like if I put, if I want to put something between, say, the right front speaker and the right side speaker, if I put it in the middle, my brain doesn't necessarily localize it to that spot. And when I say localize, basically what I mean is my brain saying, hey, it is right there, not over there, it's right there. And localization on the sides just doesn't work quite the same as when we have it in the front. And part of that is due to the HRTF, which is the head related transfer function, which is one of the, I mean, it's basically the way our brain goes. I know where that, th that sound is coming from. It's right there. When we put the same sound coming out of two different sources, meaning speakers in this case. The problem is, in nature, we're not used to that. But the other issue is, as a sound goes from in front of us to the sides and behind, the frequency balance of that sound changes. At least our perception of it changes because of the shape of our ears. And, and this, is, this is part of that HRTF. So 
when we put a sound in a speaker in front of us and then we put it on the side or we put it towards the rear, it kind of whacks out our brain because we're hearing this sound from two different spots and the frequency balance of it to our brain is different. It just does weird things and it doesn't work the way we hope it would work a lot of times. And you you may feel differently listening in your studio playing around, but that's just one of the things that I found. And if you want to find out more about that, I would strongly recommend getting Tomlinson Holman's book, Surround Sound. He talks a lot about that. I know it's not Atmos specific, but a lot of the concepts in there that they have discovered and figured out over the years, mixing and surround sound, a lot of those same concepts apply to working in Atmos. Now, the other issue that I have when I start putting things into what are kind of multiple speakers is phase related. If we've got these two sources and the sound is coming from the two sources, well, if I move a little bit back or to the side, or maybe I'm just sitting in a different position. Maybe I'm over here or over here, or someone is up there. What is happening is the time arrival from each speaker to my ear is now going to be different because we can only calibrate our speakers really for one position. And there's there's probably guys who average it out and in really large installs where you're trying to have this kind of quote unquote wider sweet spot there's probably some of that going on. But for most of us who are going to be mixing in a studio, a smaller studio, just to be mixing in Atmos, we're going to time it really right for that mix position where we're sitting all the time. So when we put things in multiple speakers and we start moving around, there's going to be phase issues with that. And I hear that in some of the some of the commercially available Atmos mixes right now. The way around that in the speakers is just put it in one speaker. And those speakers correlate to these positions, except for the center rear, which is, that's a phantom center. That's just my experience. So I try and keep everything really to sort of these positions when I'm panning, which makes this deck work really nice because I can just quickly put stuff there. If I want to move something around, and I think I talked about this in another video, if I want to move something in between speaker positions, for example, the wides. In my room, I don't have a 914 setup, so that is going to be kind of a phantom location. And it just kind of feels good to me. But for that, I'm getting at it through an object. And if I want to move stuff around and it just, it feels good to have something in between the speakers because sometimes it does feel good Um, to do that. I just use an object, but I, in general, I haven't been doing a lot of that. I did when I was first starting out and experimenting. And for me personally, I've just been liking this approach a little more. Uh, Your mileage obviously may vary. So play around, mess around. See what what happens, what you like. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit about that deck and the sound flow macros I've got and gives you some ideas about panning strategies in Atmos. You know, go try some things for yourself. See what you like. Uh, if you want to get the sound flow macros, they're up in the store on the sound flow site and they're free. If you're a paid subscriber, it's it's all free. I think you have to have a pro account, but if you've got a pro account, Go ahead and grab them. Let me know how they work for you. Um, If you want to get in touch with me to ask questions about Atmos and find out how to get help with getting your music mixed in Atmos, you can visit me at my website, www.stagelproductions.com. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.